excerpts from my translation of Nakanishi Susumu's The Japanese Linguistic Landscape, Reflections on Quintessential Words, published in 2019 by the Japan Library. As always, I will be reading two excerpts or entries, this time Ironaki Kaze and Nowaki. Ironaki Kaze, Colorless Wind. In Chinese philosophy, there is a system of thought called Gogyo Shiso, which might be translated as the five phases. According to this system, each of the four seasons is assigned a specific color. Spring is blue, summer vermilion, autumn white, and winter the deep black expressed by the Chinese character Geng. The Chinese word Hakshu, white autumn, was born from the notion that autumn is white. The renowned modern poet Kitahara Hakushu of the Meiji period made his debut Meiji and Taisho period made his debut in the literary world after taking Hakushu for his pen name. Matsuo Basho's great haibun work Oku no Hosomichi, The Narrow Road to the Deep North, written in the Gendoku period of the Edo period, Gendoku era also contains a famous haiku that describes autumn as white. Ishiyama no ishiyori shiroshi, aki no kaze. Even whiter than the, the stones of Stone Mountain, autumn's wind. Basho thus renders autumn wind, aki no kaze, as a white wind, echoing the gogyo shiso framework. In the poem, the whiteness of the wind is even more perfect and pristine than the white face of a st- stony mountain. There is another phrase, however, that equates the autumn wind, Akinokaze, not with the color white, but rather with the absence of color, Iro Nakikaze, or colorless wind. The phrase is identical in meaning to the so of the term sofu, which denotes autumn wind with the added connotation of absence or ig- insignificance. The very idea of the white wind color interpretation in the Gogyo tradition is rich and captivating enough on its own, but the term takes a stunningly novel, boldly expressive seasonal dynamic when you conceive the wind as Ironaki Kaze, one devoid of color altogether. There is a haiku by the contemporary poet Fukuda Takao that goes, Tsuri bashi yo, wataru iro naki, kaze no naka in colorless wind that crosses over the hanging bridge. The poem puts the reader within a moving, colorless, transparent wind, fully exposed to the center of the universe. The brisk feeling caused by this colorless autumn wind is also accompanied by its opposite, a twinge of melancholy. The gradual change into autumn beckons humanity into a place of quiet, meditative contemplation. The transparency of that colorless wind would never be conceivable in any season but autumn. And the next word is nowaki, or strong winds in autumn. In Japan, the autumn sum season invariably brings with it a series of powerful typhoons, which make landfall in quick succession. The most typical of these typhoons comes around the 210th day of the year. By 210th day of the year, I mean the 210th day in the old lunar calendar, which was used in Japan until the Meiji period. This calendar counted the days starting from the first day of spring, or Rishun, which falls on February 4th in the modern calendar. Therefore, in the old calendar, the 210th day refers to the time around the start of the ninth lunar month, a time when powerful winds would blow right on a fixed schedule, as if to remind us that we'd once again made it to the 210th day. The pre-modern Japanese coined a term for the fierce autumn winds, nowaki. Today, nowaki is more commonly pronounced nowake. Natsume Soseki, the great Meiji period novelist, effectively established this old word as a modern term when he used it for the title of his novel, Nowaki published in 1907. Whether we pronounce these two characters no, meaning plain, and wake, or waki, cutting and tearing through, as no wake or no waki, 
The word clearly gets its name from the strong autumn gales tearing through the plains, leveling all the grass in the, their wake. The verb wakere means to separate, or in this context, to tear through something. Interestingly, there is a related term, moromuki, which expresses the state of grass bending in all directions. The term affair, appears as far back as the Mayosho in Book 14, to be precise, evoking the image of blades of grass knocked down this way and that way, moromuki, by the force of the wind. The term gives us a glimpse into the vast breadth of the Musashino Plain. The pre-modern Japanese were obviously acutely aware, aware of how the wind moved, and that cognizance is precisely what produced the word nowaki. After all, the directional course of the wind determines the angle at which the grasses fall. Thus we have nowaki, written no, fields, and wake, divide. The wind essentially cleaves the grass into various directions on the plain. Our forebears went beyond simply noticing the wind's power as it swept across the fields. They also played, paid close attention to the pathways that those rough gusts traveled. Even today we can see the same phenomenon when we survey the rice paddies after violent storm winds have blown through. We find the poor little rice stalks pitifully leveled bending in all directions. The wind, leaves, the wind leaves scars as it blows round and round, wreaking so much havoc that it's easy to imagine the arduous task of the poor farmer who has to clean things up in the field. The rice is brutally pounded this way and that way, Moromuki, at the mercy of the wind. The ravaged scene is the essence of the Nowaki nuance. Still, the rough, uninhibited Noaki winds are not merely a malevolent force. If you observe the aftermath the day after the winds have died down, you can see how the Noaki gusts have also blown the leaves from the trees onto the lattices of every door, almost as if they placed them there purposefully. That very impression even appears, impression even appears in Sei Shonagon's celebrated work, Makura no Soshi, The Pillow Book, written in uh, 1002 A.D. On the one hand, the great Noaki winds put on a violent show that seems capable of cutting the fields into pieces. And yet these same winds, incredibly, are also capable of weaving delicate, intricate designs. Since antiquity, Japanese people have embraced both sides of this natural phenomenon, the Noaki winds. <laughs>